And if they did not follow the proper steps, no matter if they got the answer right or not, they get points deducted because they didn't follow the proper steps. But I got the answer right, but you didn't do it the right way. You have to follow God's plan That's good. step by step. That's good. You can't skip a step and go straight to the answer. That's right. That's right. That's right. So success means I, I get a favorable response or, or, or my attempt has, has been terminated and I received a favorable response. So then, you get good success as a benefit of being obedient. Mm -hmm. You're morally, righteously, properly good at the end of your task. Oh, let me keep going. Mm. The fourth great benefit of obedience. What my time is? Oh, see, look, there you go. Cool. The fourth great benefit of obedience, in verse 9 it says, God will be with you wherever you go. So if you are obedient, then you don't have to worry about going anywhere by yourself. God ain't going to accompany somebody that don't want to listen. Because he don't want his presence to be tainted by somebody that's hard-headed. So the first thing you say, God, I thought you was with me, but was you being obedient? Because if you wasn't being obedient, then he ain't going to be with you. If, you're in, if you are obedient, he will be with you wherever you go. The scripture, what's the scripture that I said? He said, uh, when you walk through the waters, I will be with you. And through the flood and through the fire, I will be with you. The, the three Hebrew boys, they he, 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 perfect example, God, thank you. Thank you. They had a choice yeah. of whether to, to, to follow God's law on, or to bow down to the, to the, to the king's law. Yeah. And they decided, well, look, check this here out. What you say? <laughs> King. Okay, <laughs> you a good dude. Yeah. But I, I want you to understand something here, King. I'm not going to defy God That's it. to make you happy. I won't do it. I won't do it. Mm -hmm. do it. And matter of fact, see, see, they're speaking by faith. Ah, come on, mm. come on. <laughs> they're speaking by faith because then they say, they say, our God ah. will deliver us. Yeah. Here's the faith part. But if he don't, yeah. we still know that he will. Yes. And then the Bible says while they were in the fire, uh -huh. there's another one in there with them walking around and it says it must be. Must be. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, because they were obedient mm -hmm. while they were in the fire, yes. God was right there. Yes. Not that anything happened to them. Because watch this. The testimony yes, yes. is going to be great because he was with them through the fire. Yes, yes. Okay, 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 I got to go. I got to go. I got to go. I got to go. Woo, God help me, Jesus. Then uh, now his issue, his issue, Shannon, his issue, his issue, his issue. Can I sit down? Thank you. His issue. I'm going to sit on this one. I want to sit down just for a few seconds. I want to listen. Let me sit down. Woo! Hallelujah. What that noble. <sighs> Being obedient means one major thing. It means that you have got to die. Mm -hmm. Being obedient means that you have got to die. The first thing you got to die to is you got to die to yourself. 
For the scripture says, I die what? Daily. Daily. Now, I'm, about, I'm about to go somewhere with this one. Because cause when, you, when, you, when you die, that means, that means, what is that point at? Oh, okay. Now, go, go to, go to first, first Corinthians. I got to stand up now. Go to First Corinthians. Go to First Corinthians. Fifteen. Go to First Corinthians. I'm almost there. I'm almost there. Y'all going to be out here before we know it. I'm almost there. First Corinthians 15. Ooh! God. Is this, is this scripture I want? Uh, yeah, that's the one that says, I protest that by your rejoicing which I have in Christ Jesus our Lord that I die daily. First Corinthians 15 and 31. Now watch this. In order for you to die, you got to die to yourself. Dying to yourself means, now I really got to say this one. Every idea you had about what you wanted to be and what you wanted to do, mm -hmm. you got to give it up. Every thought of pursuing this and pursuing that, you have to give it up. Everything that you feel was put, was put in you through your education or through the teachings that you got from other folk for your life, for you to be successful in life, you got to give it up. I'm approving. Simon was brought up by fishers, fishermen. His daddy, his granddaddy, his uncles, and all the folks, they taught him from a baby the proper way to fish and how to fish. They trained him on the job. He learned the trade not only at home but out in the water. Many nights he's out there fishing. <coughs> Many nights, many days, he came home smelling like fish. Because he was brought up to be a fisher. But when Jesus stepped on the scene, he says again, let me go back to the fifth verse. I worked all night and didn't catch nothing. But because you said so, I'm going to do it again. He died to his knowledge of his job. And in order for you to be obedient to the things of God, to the command of God in your life, you've got to quit trying to put your two cents in. You've got to stop trying to tell God how to bless you and how to do things and how to work things out. Mm, mm, mm. Hey, hallelujah. you know you better than anyone else. Mm -hmm. But I'm here to tell you, you don't know you better than God knows you. And here's the issue, you don't know the end from the beginning. God is the only one. And you cannot call those things that be not as though they were until God puts it in you. So you have to die to yourself. Yeah. Watch this. Genesis 22. I, I got to read this one. I got to. I got to. Oh. Mm, hallelujah. Genesis 22. I'm going to show you about, about, about dying to yourself. I, I got to show you. Come on, Genesis 22. Where you at? Here you go. If you're taking notes, the first through the 18th verse, but I'm not going to read all of them. But let's start at the second verse. And he, God, says to Abraham, Take now thy son, thine only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him Therefore, a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I will tell thee. Watch this, the fourth verse. The third verse, I'm sorry, watch this. And Abraham rose up early in the morning and saddled his donkey. That's not what King James says, but. 
Yeah, I don't want children to go to school <laughs> saying pastors did this, pastors did that. <laughs> he saddled his donkey <laughs> and took two of his young men with him and Isaac his son and claimed the wood for the burnt offering and rose up and went unto the place of which God had told him. Jump down to the ninth verse. And they came to the place which God had told him of. And Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order and bound Isaac, his son, and laid him on the altar upon the wood. Verse 10. And Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. Go to verse 18. And in thy seed shall, this is God talking to Abraham now, and in thy seed shall all nations of the earth be blessed because thou hast done what? Obey, Obey my voice. Mm -hmm. I'm sitting back now. Abraham had to die to himself and had to be willing to sacrifice those he loved for the sake of God. Now, I, I'm going to I'm have to define that, and I'm going to have to uh, elaborate on that just a little bit longer. Okay. First, let me say it one more again. He had to die himself. Mm -hmm. And then sacrifice the ones he loved mm -hmm. with his love for them and them in order to fulfill the call of God on his life. Mm -hmm. He had to be willing First of all, the first thing he had to do was be willing to leave his father's house. Because that's what happened earlier in the book. Get thee up from that father's house. And go where I'm telling you to go. Sometimes, you can't, you can't be obedient to the voice of God hanging around family. Amen. <laughs> because family knows better than God. And family will tell you that you weren't hearing God at that time. They sure will. They will try to tell you what the Lord is saying. Yes, they will. The Lord didn't invite them to the conversation. <laughs> so you you will have to sacrifice your love for your family. And I love you dearly, but I got to follow God. Watch this, watch this, watch this. And then they're going to talk about you like a dog. But you still got to love them, but you still got to gotta sacrifice that relationship for the sake of God. Amen. Now, here's, here's, here's the thing. We say that God don't tempt us. That's what we say. That's not what the Bible says. The Bible says God tempted Abraham. Verse 1. And it came to pass after these things that God did what? Tempt Abraham. Because God wanted to see if Abraham was going to be obedient. Uh, uh -huh. okay. God knew the end from the beginning. But he wanted to see how loyal and obedient Abraham was going to be. So therefore, he gives Abraham a test. Yeah. I know you love that boy. Mm -hmm. But are you willing to give up that boy for me? Mm -hmm. All right, let me change it there, Elder Ghost. I know you want that man. Yeah. <laughs> but are you willing to give him up yeah. for me? I know you've been looking at that girl. Mm -hmm. And y'all been breathing on the phone late at night. <laughs> But are you willing to give her up for me? The Bible says, and I want you to check this out. As soon as, as God tells Abraham to go and sacrifice Isaac, the very next day, Abraham gets up and he goes, he gets everything he needs to sacrifice his son and he goes to where God tells him to go. He does not take time to consider 
what God said. Because this is the issue with, 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 uh, with I ain't talking about y'all. I'm talking about folk. Here's the issue with folk. If they sit and think about it long enough, they will come up with their own interpretation of what God said. I'm telling you, in order to be obedient, you gotta die. You gotta crucify your mind. You gotta sacrifice relationships. Because here's the issue: some folk can't go where God's gonna take you. That's good. That's good. That's good. As much as you love them, and as much as you want them to be a part of what God is going to do in your life. Some of you just going to have to cut off. That's right. And here's the deal. Here's the deal because I, I went in prayer. Uh, I, I, I was in prayer you know, and, and, and I, I, I hadn't prayed this particular prayer in a while because I, I prayed and I left it and I gave it to God. I said, God, check this in here out. This is what I said. I'm, I'm going to be real. I said, look, everyone that you've assigned to be with me now, I ain't talking about members. I'm talking about those relationships that God has brought to, to me to, to, to uh, you know, the, 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 the professional relationship thingies, you know, that God has brought, connected with us, that we've been connected with. I said, okay, look, everyone that you have assigned to connect with me that, 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 that's going to experience you in my life Bring them. Then I said this: those that are, that that you don't want in my life, you cut them off. I said this: I said I can do it, but I can do it. I do it. I can do it the wrong way. I said you cut them off. And then here's the deal: when you cut them off, give me the spirit, give me the heart to let them go. That's good. Because I understand the fact that, that, that even though even though there are people out there that I love and people out there that that, that, that I respect and people out there that, that, I, that I like and, and, and that like me and, and that want to get attached to me, I understand that there are a lot of them that are not there that's not going to be able to handle what God's going to do in my life. And so therefore, the best way to get them out is to let God do it. Yeah. That's, that's dying to yourself. That's dying. You got to die. I got to go. Let me read some scriptures. And I got to go. Isaiah. Isaiah. I'm, I, I'm, I'm finished. I got to go. I got some celebrating to do. And, um, I know Y'all, y'all want to come back tonight, but I have to ask you to allow me not to let you come back because I've got some stuff I've got to do. No problem. We're going to be obedient to, sir. We're going to be obedient. Hallelujah. We're going to be obedient. Nevertheless, that's your word, sir. But Isaiah 1. I'm still talking about obedience now. Isaiah 1. Verse 19. It says this. It says, If ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. All right. Refuse and rebel. Come on. Ye shall be devoured with the sword for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Simply put, Come on, sir. Either you be obedient or you suffer the consequences. All right. How is it that we expect our children to take a whooping because they were disobedient mm. and still love us and not curse us out 
and not call social services on us. All right. But then when God want to beat us because we're disobedient, we don't want to come. We don't want to come around no more. Mm. Mm. All right, let me let me go another one then, Chuck. Let me go another one. Then I, I got to move on. How is it? I we expect our children to take a whooping, and then we take a whooping from God, but we can't take a whooping from our leader. Woo! What you say? Well. Mm. Mm, mama. If I get a phone call from Tampa, Florida, my boss is in Tampa, Florida, Bishop Matthew Williams. He's the Adjutant General, Church of God Christ. He calls me on my phone. Anderson, you need to be in North Dakota. Tomorrow morning. Low. Bye. Tomorrow morning come. I'm not in North Dakota. <laughs> Tomorrow night comes. I'm not in North Dakota. First of all, he's going to call and find out where he is. Sure is. I don't answer the phone till Wednesday. <laughs> Didn't I tell you? That you're supposed to be in North Dakota Monday morning. Well, uh, Bishop, uh, you know, you know, we go way back, Bishop. You know, you know, way before you came, Bishop. And you know, I, I just, you, you just missed that when I feel that in my spirit. And you, know, <laughs> you wasn't paying for my trip, <laughs> so, uh, so I didn't show up. All right. That's what they say. See you, in. Bye. <laughs> Y'all laugh. <laughs> I get the aim. I walk into the Adjutant's Academy. He's right there with his deputy, Clarence Lewis, and Robert Perry. <laughs> Take that red and black cord from around my neck. Sure. Throw it in the trash with my cross that I paid for. Tell me I am never, I, I'm not an agent anymore and I will never be an agent ever again. I get mad and want to leave the church of God in Christ. And start my own thing. Oh, that's, how, that's what they do. All because I was disobedient. Wow. Mind you, if I call Juan Goodson today and say, Juan, I need you. In Edenton in the morning. And Juan Goodson doesn't go to Edenton in the morning, then I'm gonna be on the phone going up one side and down the other, pausing in the middle to catch my breath so I can go down the other side full steam. And expect him to take it and still serve. But I couldn't take it when I was disobedient. That's how a lot of church folk is, there, Rattler. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> they gonna be disobedient. They done made up in their mind they ain't doing what, what the first lady tell them. Cause she ain't my mom. And she ain't the pastor. So I ain't gonna do what she tell me. But I expect them to let me get up and say a word every now and then. Yes, lay hands too. Come on, sir. <laughs> The Bible says if you are willing and, and obedient, come on, sir. You will eat the good thing, but if you refuse and rebel, mm -hmm. judgment is coming. It's going to happen. Romans 15. I got hurry up to go. Romans 15. We're preaching today, sir. Romans 15. What is this? this don't read this one.
first Peter. And I got a couple things now, and I got to go. I'm serious, I got to go. First Peter. First Peter 1. First Peter 1. Uh, let me read. Let me read this to you, and I, I'm not going. Um, I'm not going to elaborate. I'm just going to read. I pray I'm not going to elaborate. It says work. It says work for gird up your, the loins of your mind. Be sober, and hope to the end. Verse thirteen. I'm sorry. And hope to the hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Then watch this. As obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lust of your ignorance. Okay. Okay. I'm not calling you ignorant. I ain't calling none of y'all ignorant. But the Bible says your former lust made you ignorant. So the things that you was going after that wasn't of God called you to be ignorant. And it's a shame, I, I, I ain't talking about none of y'all, thank God I ain't talking about none of y'all, but it's a shame how some church folk allow the former life in back into their life. Mm -hmm. And they don't understand that they're ignorant. <coughs> That's what the Bible say. Y'all just take the first Peter 1, starting in verse 13. Mm -hmm. All right, can I finish? But as he which hath called you is holy, right. yeah. so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. All right. Watch this, watch this, now watch this, watch this, watch this. Holy. All manner of conversation. <laughs> say it, Lord. Woo! Holy, holy, holy. I wouldn't say it. <laughs> yes, sir. See, that's holy. a manner of conversation. Yes. You helping us, sir. Come on. See, watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. If, if you say that, then you revert back to your, your ignorant ways. If you if you act a little unseemingly when somebody says something to you, that you are reverting back to your ignorant ways. Because the Bible says, "Be ye holy in all manner of conversation." That also means deed. What you do, the way you look at somebody when they cross you wrong. Well, you throw up your hand and tell them to look between the, the, the gaps. <laughs> Woo! That's, that's manner of conversation. And you got to be holy in all manner of conversation. Because it is written, verse 16, Be ye holy, for I am holy. Uh, obedience in the, in, the, in the Christian's life. Obedience in the Christian's life. Romans 6 and 17. Obedience in the Christian life. First, Romans 6 and 17 tells us simply this. It says this. But God be thanked that ye were the servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you. Being then, then, then made free from sin, ye became the servants of righteousness. Mm -hmm. Obedience in a Christian's heart, obedience in a child of God's heart, in a child of God's life, excuse me, comes from the heart. Mm -hmm. okay. If you believe in your heart, it starts with your heart. Then it comes out your mouth and confess with your mouth. Faith starts with the heart. Simon started with his heart. Even though he said, he said, we worked all night and didn't catch nothing. But because you said so, started with his heart. Started with his heart. And obedience comes from the heart. It, right. You're obedient because you want to be. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And the want to be comes from the heart. Right. You're disobedient because you don't want to be. That's right. 
So in the, ch in, in, in the life of a child of God, obedience comes from the heart. Okay, then keep going. Second Corinthians. Second Corinthians. Oh, Second Corinthians, second chapter. Fourth verse. Says this. Says, For out of much affliction and anguish of heart I wrote unto you with many tears. Not that ye should be grieved, but that ye might know the love which I have made, which I have more abundantly unto you. Obedience in the life of a child of God yes. needs to be tested. Mm. Oh. <laughs> okay. All right. See, that's all amen. That's all I'd want, but he amen. He was tested. Mm -hmm. that's good, it comes from your heart, but you have to be tested. Mm -hmm. Do I have to go through it? It's a test. It's only a test. <clears throat> It's only a test. Second Corinthians 2 and 4. It's only a test. And here's the ticket, you all. Here's a ticket. It's an open book test. Which simply means you have the answers to pass the test. How can you flunk an open book Test. Come on, sir. Well, I don't know where to look. It has a concordance. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's good. Well, it don't have all the scriptures. Then go on BibleGateway.com. It's there. The test is not meant to take you out. Right. It's not meant for you to fail. Right. Just a test your obedience and to see if you can handle what God's about to put on you. Well, wow. Hallelujah. <sighs> Glory. Hallelujah. Yeah. I see that. Okay. Woo. My, my, my. First Peter. Thank you, Father. One. Hallelujah. Verse 22. Talking about obedience in the, in the life of a child of God. 1 Peter 1, verse 22 says this, Seeing he hath purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren. See that ye love one another with a pure heart and fervently, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible. Ugh. Incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. Obedience in the life of a child of God has to be aided by the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. How else are you going to make it through the test? Because you can't make it through the test by, by your own will. A lot of things you go through, you can't take it, you can't go through it by yourself. You need the aid of the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. 